This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 145 of Horsemanship Radio brought to you by Omega Fields, the world's best omega-3 supplements for horses. Horsemanship Radio is a part of the family of the Horse Radio Network. Today, we have two compassionate horse and animal lovers who happen to be trainers as well. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thank you for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month, and I have my producer, Jen, with me today. How are you, Jen? Hello. I'm doing fabulously. How about yourself? I'm good. How would I do this without you? That's kind of a silly statement. I have my producer, Jen, with me today. Would I be on my own? Never. No. These are so much fun for me to do because you have such an incredible variety of different folks that are involved with horses. And it's fun because the Horsemanship Radio Show, sometimes they're riders. Sometimes they're people who breed or raise horses. Sometimes they're people who don't even own horses, but are still yeah. really crucial within the horse community. Yeah. Sometimes yes. nationally and sometimes locally, but it's such a variety and it really highlights the fact that horses permeate our society way more than we realize. I think so too. I think so too. And I love highlighting those people, whether they're unsung heroes or whether they're people that are making a difference globally. I I think they're all important. Every one of you is important who's listening to this, who is making a difference for a horse's life, whether that's, you know, advocating for something, whether that is feeding one or whether that's aspiring to have one. I, our whole goal here is to keep horses in people's lives. And this episode I love because it's about celebrating those who rescue horses. And to me, that is the, you know, that is a labor of love for people to take that on in sometimes a hard economy. And sometimes there's issues. It's just like anybody who is a foster parent or, you know, takes in an orphan. I just as thrilled with either one of those scenarios for people. And I, I think you're just going to love these two. They're the R's here. We've got Raphael and we've got Rachel and they're about rescue. There we go. And we're going to hear from our first guest right after this from our title sponsor, Omega Fields. Omega Fields provides the world's best flax-based omega-3 supplements for horses. Their Omega Horse Shine supplement is designed to improve health and performance naturally through advanced formulations developed by industry-leading animal health professionals. Here's what Frankie Evans had to say about her experience with Omega Horse Shine. I have been using Omega Horse Shine for about a year now and have seen remarkable results in both my horses, age 24 and 4. They are turned out together yet have very different needs. Omega Horse Shine is a very natural and healthy supplement that has allowed me to successfully and safely address the unique needs of both my horses. I have seen new hoof growth, increased energy, shining coats, and no colic since beginning the new supplements. The extra benefit is the affordable price. I have been very happy with the results. Thanks so much, Omega Fields. Raphael Valle from Tennessee has shared the message that Tennessee walking horses, really all horses, will respond positively to being treated with kindness and respect. Now, Ivory Pal, his Tennessee walking horse, is a golden Palomino champion, and he's owned, trained, and loved by Raphael. He's an extraordinary performer and a partner with an exceptionally great temperament. This amazing stallion performs bitless and barefoot and even has a book, his own original theme song and a music video. How about that? With his own Facebook page now, it's over 160,000 fans. It's easy to see that many horse lovers recognize the greatness and the goodness of this wonderful stallion. Well, welcome, Raphael. How are you? Doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on the show again. It's been a while. so I have uh, a new back. Gotta, That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah looking yeah. forward to catching up. Thank you. Me too. I know we, we put this in the books about a month ago or something, and I've just been uh, so excited to have you on the lineup. And I looked up today what the last episode was that you told your story to us and shared some things about 
Ivory Pal and your relationship. And it was episode 77. So, you know, we we are due. We are due for that. Yeah, time flies when we're having fun, right? You it's are having around fun. Horses. I know. That is so true. And and Ivory Pal is healthy and looking active and good. Oh, he's doing great. 22 years young. Yeah. I mean, he's had a new uh, energy here in his life. He's going to be like Mick Jagger in the Rolling Stones, right? <laughs> Not giving up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, he looks great. And people should go on your Facebook page for sure and just check out that blonde beauty. He's just, he does look awesome. 22 is unbelievable. What, what's your daily routine with him? With him, you know, just let him be a horse. You know, let him be out and he's out in the pasture with his son, Sonny, who's now four years old. And then Cimarron is the gelding who's about his same age, 22. So I just let him come and go Yeah, to and from the barn on his own. He has free access to the barn and and he puts himself in the barn in the morning, hangs out there until the evening, and then goes and grazes. And so just let him you know, be, be a horse. And obviously when I'm feeding him and I spend time with him, I, I, I one of the routines we've done since I've had him is to always flex, do the little mm-hmm. flexions around the neck and you know, let him, his nose touch his rear end. So I think that's helped. I should be better about that myself, stretching on an individual <laughs> basis. <laughs> yeah. Not help, but I, I, I do it with, with him, and I also do it with Sonny. His, uh, his, his, his son. son. So that, that's a routine. And when I don't, and every day since I've had him, he waits at the gate. You know, whether it was in Florida mm-hmm. or here, he waits at the gate for me to do something. And when I don't have time to ride him or it's too hot, I leave and uh, let him out the gate and he goes uh, just uh, wandering around the house and yard and he loves it. And the times if you know, I have to travel or something, I'm not here. My wife said he just waits there looking at, for me at the gate every Aww. every time. And he goes, okay, then I guess you're not here. But what's amazing is that Sonny, his, I was, his son has picked up the same routine. So I have two golden boys waiting for me <sighs> at the gate every, uh, every uh, afternoon now. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? He's so he's a Palomino too, then. Yeah? Yes, almost a spitting image of him. Yeah. The only difference is that his blaze is a little wider. But other than that, I have to do a double take when I see him, and you see him from the side or the back. You really can't tell, which is. One, uh, two things, actually, how Sonny's gotten bigger now at four, and then how good Pal's looking yeah. now, you know, at 22, that he's still, exactly. he, he's still got that youthful body. Yeah, can you imagine having that same body at 20? I mean, that's old, <laughs> right? That's well, good. That's yeah. good. But he's, he yeah. looks spectacular. Some people should Thank look you. on your Facebook page that where he runs up the hill. He's on the outside of the fence. It's really cute. <laughs> he's up, right, he's right. That's, the, that's when, probably one of the afternoons where I had let him out just to wander around the house. In uh, the yard, so that's what he was doing. <laughs> that's right. Was, good, good observation. Yes, he was running <laughs> outside the fence for that reason. <laughs> he looks having a great time. He's like, we are, oh. I'm out. <laughs> oh, but, absolutely. But you keep him in good shape. But I see that you take him to events still, and you're still really active uh, going to the fairs in the summer, at least, right? Events and where he's yeah, he's part of yeah, the attraction. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, he loves it. If you asked me probably 10 years ago, I thought, well, 22, he'll be you know retired and just let mm-hmm. him be a horse. But he loves it. He thrives it. So we do you know, little opening ceremonies. Uh, and and the, the big event we did this summer was at the Wilson County Fair in Lebanon, Tennessee, which is one of the largest fairs in the country. Mm-hmm. And they asked me if uh, he wanted to kind of lead the parade. And I said, sure. So when we got there, uh, we had a park in an area that we had to walk about a mile to the area through all these carnival rides, flipping and noises, <laughs> and, and there were monster trucks. And I'm like, okay, oh pal, gosh. I'm putting you through the ultimate test. Yes, you know? <laughs> so we made it there. They got to the parade area where you're, you know, hundreds, actually it was thousands of people lined up on both sides. There's all balloons and those, what do you call the Shriner cars going around the circle, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Martian bands. And, and he took it like a champ. I mean, he, I said, I knew he could take a lot of situations very well, but right there, that was probably the most challenging event we've ever been to because I mean, it was, there was just crowds all over him. And then he was so good. Uh, 
we were leading him, you know, after a little performance there, it was an improvised performance we did on the side. He would just stop for the kids perfectly, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of those things, all the things going on around him, you know, a horse like that would be freaking out or spooking. Oh, yeah. But for he sure. was just aware that, okay, I'm here calm for the kids and so forth. And I told the event or- organizers that, and he was the only horse in the parade, obviously. And oh. I said, do you realize probably 98% of the horses would have exploded? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I <laughs> hope he knows that. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it, that is amazing. I mean, 22, he, and he's still full of energy and everything too. That is an amazing partnership that you've got, that he trusts you to go through all that craziness, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. I, and, I, and I think that was the key. You know, I trusted him and vice versa. Yeah, and I think a lot of you know, things that makes him say so healthy is obviously, you know, his diet. I mean, we obviously have been, you know, talking about it later, but uh, he's been on Omega Horse Shine for 22 years for his feet and and also just being outside, coming in as you go. And I think having the opportunity to be in the pasture with the other gelding and most important, his little colt, because they play, they play and they're exercising and they're out there he, yeah, he just playing as the stallions, you know, play out in the wild. But it, it's beautiful uh, because you could tell that uh, Ivory Pal is teaching his son, you know, things, I yeah. guess, as they would be in, in, in the wild. And I think that keeps his, his body and mind, you know, mm-hmm. sharper. And, and and he'll take down the colt. I mean, in a playful way, the colt gets <laughs> a little bit there playing. He'll still take him down. So, you know, daddy still rules, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't you forget it, kid. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So yeah. And the, and the, can you imagine that like when you were a kid that you would be barefoot, bitless, you know, these, um, th- when we talked about what you did in that parade or at those fairs, you did some routines out there that were pretty amazing. It's just you and Ivory Pal talking to each other. There's not a lot of extrinsic equipment you're using. No, that's correct. Thank you for observing that. Yes, he's absolutely correct about barefoot, and we use a, a bitless uh, bridle. So a lot of it is just communicating, you know, with the shift in the in my weight and the leg cues and so forth. And you know that that's all that's all it takes. You know, we had to overcome his earlier foundation where you know the mm-hmm. people that eventually initially trained him before I got him were really harsh. So I had to overcome things. But yeah, it shows you know, that you, you put a horse in a pretty uh, challenging mm-hmm. situation and you still have full control despite not having you know, the metal bits and so forth because, you know, like, as you mentioned earlier, it comes down to the trust and the relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe you can give those new listeners a little overarching of the story behind how you came to become Ivory Pal's family. Right. It's uh, Sometimes, you know, you have plans and you know, mm-hmm. God has other plans for you because I always wanted a horse and I knew it was going to happen, but we thought it was uh, going to be an Andalusian because that's what I used to ride in the summers when I used to go down vacation in uh, Nicaragua, where my, mm-hmm. you know, where I was born actually. And I rode, rode them and they're magnificent, you know, athletic yes. horses. Oh, yeah. And, and so that was my goal, you know, farm, horse, in Andalusian, and, you know, just kind of be a recreational rider. And, but until that time, uh, you know, we, we would go to the different horse farms in Ocala, you know, beautiful horse country. So mm-hmm. some of the cross a Tennessee walking horse farm just to learn about a breed, you know, a different breed. And I had no intention of ever buying a, a Tennessee walker, much less a stallion, much less at that time, because we didn't, I didn't even have a farm to put him with. So I saw, you know, went down this center aisle barn and uh there was this horse that just captivated me he just had a beautiful aura about him and, and everything and i inquired about him and and you know obviously the price was very high on him but uh looking back it was the best deal i've ever made in my life Aww, he's uh, beautiful and then it just took you know i just wanted a trail horse and wanted a gelding and and there's came a couple times when i was ready to geld him but his temperament was just exceptional you know and kind of <laughs> kept putting it aside and was like, okay, what difference would, would, would it make? So it took a life of its own, no plans, nothing. But as I said, sometimes things happen where you just get chosen to be the one to kind of be the messenger, I guess. And, and I mean, I would say, you know, Ivory Powell has definitely enriched my life more than I've given to him because it, it's incredible that he's opened up, you know, 
uh, in a whole nother life and meeting great, mm. great people and great opportunities that I would have never had if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful story that you both have. And it's wonderful that you get to share it with so many people too. You served in the military. I was noticing you had some photos up yeah, recently yeah. too. Yeah. Which branch were you in? I was Army. Mm-hmm. I did Army ROTC through uh, uh, college, got commissioned and then did 14 years uh, in the Army Reserves. And it was a great opportunity. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my wife about that, how Everything played along because, you know, I was mostly a, a, a finance major in school, man. I grew up playing sports and so forth. So when I was going through through college, there was something missing uh, about, you know, the overall, you know, my, my me preparing professionally. And it was the leadership part mm-hmm. because you read about it in books and so forth. And I'm like, okay, you know, you can't, how can you learn this? So I was walking, you know, around the yeah, little cafeteria area. One one day there was an uh, Army ROTC recruiter, mm-hmm. and it said leadership excellence, and I captured my attention and I went there and said, okay, where do I sign up? So <laughs> it was a great preparation for so many ways, and and also to learn, you know, it, it helped me train horses mm-hmm. because there is a correlation about you know the trust, you know, leading by example and so forth. So. Having that background helped me kind of uh, transfer things to Ivory Pal, then. Vice versa, learning from the horses has helped me enhance you know, my leadership skills in, in my profession because I tell everybody, you know, what I learned from the uh, Ivory Pound is like, that's a 1,200 pound stallion. Mm-hmm. You think I could dominate and control that mm-hmm. horse over time? No. So it's about trust, the relationship, and learn, you, learn to use a less amount of force to get the desired result, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, so yeah, it, it's been a mutual kind of parallel career where you know i've been able you know to have very very much blessed success with him as a in the horse world and also you know in my professional career which i just hit 30 years uh being, uh, being with, with in the same company that is amazing what's the company that you work for i work for the federal deposit insurance corporation yeah yeah no that's i mean amazing that you get to keep horses in your life and you've got a career and everything too what what are your feelings about the qualities of horses to help humans heal too you know in the military oh it's fantastic uh as you know i've been involved with hope and healing uh, you know that is run by jennifer o'neill and i think it's remarkable and I, i'm glad to see that more and more people are catching on to it. You know, personally, I didn't know at that time, but, you know, when you go through challenging times in your life, I found myself, you know, at, at the barn you know, with mm-hmm. him and just, you know, stiffing and stuff. It was a calming effect. So I could understand how that would help somebody you know, or, or military heroes and have suffered, you know, um, and seen some, some horrific things, you know, help them relax and trust and so forth. So, so it's a definitely great therapeutics. And I see now they're trying to push some of the ponies as as a service animals where you can bring them on a pony, right? right? <laughs> I know, I saw <laughs> that too. That's a little bit extreme, but, but, but uh, <laughs> no, they're, they're great. So my two favorite animals, they go hand in hand, are definitely horses and dogs. You, know? you got to yeah, have a bunch yeah. of them on the farm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I think animals in general, too, but they are different that way. I I love that you brought up both. I mean, it's both into the spectrum. It's leadership that horses can help us, you know, develop and and understand. And then also healing, which, you know, it takes that that big old soldier that feels like he's a leader. But but you're absolutely right. How do you get a 200 pounded horse or anything that's like 10 times faster than us too, to do anything that we ask without building some trust and building some, uh, you know, I think horses don't know we're leaders, but they know that we're trustworthy and they'll follow us if, if you've got those elements in your physiology. And, but then also they will, they read your intent so well that I think the, right. the healing right. part. Body language. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, then that's it. It's the same thing in dealing with in humans, you know, even though I think sometimes horses are easier to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, the same principle. Make the right thing easy and the yes. wrong thing difficult, right? And you make it yes. fair because if I'm always you know, being, you know, punishment and so forth. And when you overuse it, then you lose the credibility and the trust. But, well, sometimes you may have to escalate 
that things you just do enough until the you know the individual or or in this case the horse understands that you're trying to to communicate, not being punitive. You're trying to get a corrective desired course of action or behavior. That's right. Right thing easy. You got it. You're such a good trainer. Yep. You are inspiring, Raphael. Thank you so much for continuing to share. Well, thank you. Like I said, I'm just, you know, blessed to have this opportunity. Like I said, sometimes things take a course and you look back and say, how did that happen? And just, just a, just a total blessing. So is Sonny going to be, you know, following in father's footsteps? Oh, he is a complete showman. <laughs> oh, oh good. He is, uh, good. Yeah. Oh, he, he pretty much does everything now that I be pal does. You know, I haven't ridden him much. You know, I've just kind of you know, got the saddle and I sit on him. And, and, and he, But he gives to cues so easily because, you know, I, I imprinted him. So he understands he's only been handled by me. So he's never had the harsh treatment that I repel experienced right. at his age. So I basically, you know, just look at him and he moves and, and he's very graceful, athletic. And he is a complete hand. He gets on that pedestal. And he just like pumps up. So I'm excited to work with him, but he's still, I think, young four. And four. plus, you know, Powell, Ivory Powell is still, maybe they're in a competition, right? Maybe right. he tells him, yeah, you're not going to be throwing me quite yet, son. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> the boss here. So I uh, did this, this, but I do work with them. I said, he's basically ready to go. And I, I take him, you know, on the neighborhood for, you know, on the lead ropes and walked and he just handles everything perfectly. So there's a lot of similarity. So that's, that's an, another yes. blessing that that's, you know, the gift that I guess I repel is giving me where, you know, I wanted something that resembled him and boy, he could not ask for uh, almost a clone image. And I remember when he was born, Senia, cause that's what I wanted, a, a male a Palomino. And I walked to the barn, Bell, the mayor, had given birth. You could tell the placenta was there laying there. And I looked into the uh, open barn area and I saw a little, you know, palomino. That took my breath away. But then when I saw that, it was a cult. Oh boy, that was like a, like a Christmas for an adult, you know? Uh, that was, <laughs> that was sure. a beautiful feeling. Uh, that is so cool. Everybody wants to have that experience too, where they they have their baby oh. to grow up, right? Sometimes we only do it yeah. once because it's a lot of work. <laughs> But, oh, it, but is. it is a and cool I have, experience. Yeah. And I also have the daughter, and I shouldn't downplay her because she is remarkable. Her name is oh. Star. She was actually born a year before Sunny, mm-hmm. and she's beautiful too. I mean, very sweet, got the head. Not as, as, as the natural, raw ability that Sunny has for the maneuvers. You know, she's more of a, of a, you know, as a standard. You know, walkers, but but she is remarkable, sweetheart as could be. She wants to be in your pocket all the time, and she's also ready to, to ride and everything. So look, I've got I have two of his babies, son. Oh my both, gosh, uh, they're both beautiful. We have so much to look forward to. How exciting is that? I yes, didn't know about yes, Star. Yes. I love Tennessee walking yes. horses. I just think they have the most quiet demeanor. They really are so generous. They really are cool. Well, it's oh, been fun definitely. having you, Raphael. Thank you so oh, much you. for catching up with us and sharing a little bit more about your family. <laughs> well, and I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, I, I, I can't wait. And so I hope everybody will go to your Facebook page. What is it? It's just Ivory Pal. That's that's mm-hmm. his name. And obviously a space in between there. So okay, can, Ivory uh, Pal. So P A L. Yes. And, and, and the reach. yep. You have a website or anything else that people can get a hold of you and watch, follow. Yeah, the uh, website is Ivory Knoll. That's K N O L L Ranch dot com. So Ivory Knoll Ranch dot com. And can't thank everybody enough for the great warm comments that everybody leaves you know you post a picture and okay just a picture and then but everybody loves it and you know that, that's been uh, yeah i would be remiss not to you know say how much that's a great part having i repel all the you know love and affection that yeah. everybody has embraced with him that's just very very humbling and that's why we keep him out there yeah just try to do a couple of performances in the year and exhibitions because i know how 
and you have people enjoy seeing him and and the effect he has on people is remarkable. So, you know, we know as long as we can and he can, we'll definitely make, you know, performances several times a year. Nice. Well, people will have to keep up with you at the hundred over 160,000 fans now on Ivory Pals page, which is pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Humbling. Yeah, pretty humbly. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Raphael, for being on Thank with you. us on Horsemanship Radio. Yeah. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Cavallo hoof boots are easy to get on and stay on in all types of terrain and activities. Unique drainage slots allows water to drain out quickly, and they are super easy to take off, too. With Cavallo's, you spend your time on the trail with your best friend, not wasting time putting on complicated hoof boots. Cavallo hoof boots come in three durable upper options and two sole widths. You get confidence and security with their best boot ironclad warranty. Cavallo hoof boots take you where you want to go. Rachel Long is a 20-something beautiful lady who is addicted to rescuing animals. Her first rescue was Tucker in 2007 before acquiring Loki, Truby, Samus, and then Thanos and Lyra. Tucker and Truvy are two horses who love to love and play and learn with Rachel, who rides them both traditionally and at Liberty. Rachel believes that health and happiness come first, then riding after. Well, welcome. Welcome, Rachel Long. I'm so glad to have you on Horsemanship Radio. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm I'm excited to learn more about you, Rachel, and I think we'll have a lot of listeners who are as well, because I think there's a lot of parts of your story that people can relate to in themselves, and I think rescuing animals is is definitely one of them. I think everybody has a story of some sort or another, and I want to hear yours. I think it's going to be fun. First of all, though, you have to tell us who all these characters are. You've got Tucker, Truby, <laughs> Samus, Loki. Thanos and Lyra. Who are all those That's characters? That's right. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll go in order that they came into my life. There's Tucker, who is my first horse, and I've had him for about 12 years. And then there's Loki, who came a little bit later. He was my first dog. And we got Samus added to our family, and she was my first cat. And then we kind of had a Bunch. And then Truby was added to the mix as Tucker's best friend. Now I call them brothers because they act like brothers. And those are the two horses. And then Loki got a brother and my second dog, Thanos. All of them are rescues. So finally, Sam has needed a friend. So I got her, her little sister, Lyra. And those are the cats. Awesome. Does everything come in twos at your household? Yeah, everyone needs a friend. I don't like yeah. anybody lonely. So everyone's got their buddy. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that idea anyway. And I, I can't imagine anybody being lonely at your place because it sounds like so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, definitely not a lonely moment. Not a lonely moment. And you're adding to it all the time, which is really fun. So I'd love to, to, I got into your story a little bit because my, my title sponsor is Omega Fields and I found out about Nantucket Blue, which is your Instagram page. And I did the rabbit hole thing and I found out why it's called Nantucket Blue. But uh, your story begins at your first horse camp as a young girl. And I'd love for you to start there because our horsey story is the is the foremost here. <laughs> yes, definitely. And my horsey story is the one that shaped my life. So, yeah, when I was seven, I went to my first Girl Scout camp. I had been asking for a horse pretty much since I could talk. I was always <laughs> disappointed when my parents got me a toy instead of the real thing. All right. So finally, they sent me to camp, and I was hooked. My parents were a little sad because it was so expensive, but also happy that I had this passion. I went to more Girl Scout camps and ended up riding horses for people to exercise after taking some lessons. And that's where I ended up meeting Tucker. He was abandoned at that barn that I was riding at by a man who brought him all the way from Connecticut. So he was loved in the beginning of his life, but for whatever reason, something changed and he was left there and he was left untouched for about six months before I asked to work with him and fell in love with him uh, pretty yeah. much in a day. And my mom saw us together, convinced my dad that we absolutely had to pay for this horse's board. So he wasn't sent to auction. 
Right. And a year later, he became officially mine. And that's where it all started. So since then, we've just been figuring it out and adding to our fur family. Yes, your fur babies. Yes. And Tucker, so Tucker started this all. Well, I guess I, I would say yeah. you you started this all. And then the camps actually <laughs> added fuel to the flame. And then Tucker shows up in your life. And he's gorgeous. I mean, how does a guy... I, I know everybody's story is unique, and but it it never ceases to amaze me that describe Tucker. He's how old was he when he was abandoned, basically left at the equestrian center? Um, and yeah, and so, what does he look like? What's his breed? Okay, so I met him originally when he was three years old, and my mom still remembers this moment better than I do. Like we got there, like we always did, and I was only thirteen years old, so my mom was with me all the time. And um, I saw him in a stall and I told my mom, like, that is the most beautiful horse I've ever seen. He's my dream horse. Mm -hmm. And he was just this dark gray with like a black mane and black legs and just super pretty horse with a long mane, which is every girl's dream is a horse with a long mane. You can braid it and brush it and (laughs) all that stuff. Just super pretty. And I met the owner and he seemed like a nice guy and he let me ride him a couple of times and he only had like a couple of months of riding time on him. Mm-hmm. But so I did have a bit of a background of Tucker's training and everything by the time that I started working with him less than two years later after he was abandoned. So he was kind of just in the back of the property, like kind of said, kind of forgotten about. And I always wanted to like go work with him, but I didn't have permission. So he was in tax he, he was a stallion? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. He, he was a gelding, but Good. there okay. was quite a phase where it was kind of questionable because he was oh. three years old and just kind of left to his devices. So he was not very well socialized for a while either. But yeah, he was a gelding and he's an appendix quarter horse. So I'm pretty sure he's just a straight half thoroughbred, half quarter horse appendix, mm-hmm. but I don't have papers on him or anything. I do know he was found. Yeah, he's super pretty. And he was found in like a newspaper ad. That's the only information I ever got from the owner. But he turned out to be, you know, really good horse for a lot of random things that we've done in our lifetime. And and yeah, so he he and I started that journey together. Yeah, you're the consummate rescuer, though. I mean, I think... I think you got lucky a little bit that you <laughs> that you mm-hmm. had this horse that was you know semi feral at that point, well six months worth, but yeah. Um, yeah. and that you jumped on. I, I read your story where you just jumped on him just to see how it'd go, and um, in a round pen, thankfully, with yeah, people around with a helmet. <laughs> with a helmet with people around, which is really yeah. good. But I love I love story about you were kind of afraid to saddle him for the first few rides because you didn't know what he would do with that, so you'd yeah. rather just go. <laughs> yeah, we did trail rides and everything bareback for probably more than a month. I just don't remember now, but we would just do the rope halter bareback rides and we just went out with everybody else and kind of hung out. And he was, you know, always Happy really to- good in a group of other horses. So yeah. I, I was lucky to have that too. Well, that's good. I guess after all your lifelong experience here now, I know you're 20 something, but you've you've adopted at least six animals at this point. What would you say to the person who says, this don't you know, it's not the right time right now to adopt or to rescue? You know, that's mm-hmm. that's something I want to do sometime down the road, but you know, there's a crossroads here. I work all day. What do you say to them? I'll say what my the riding instructor said is that it's never going to be the perfect time and we just do it and figure it out. And that's what I've done with all six of mine is, you know, I knew I wanted to add them. Didn't necessarily always have the means. When I got my second horse, Truby, I was in my last year of college and I could barely make ends meet with my one horse and one dog and one cat. But, um, (laughs) you know, Truby became part of the family because actually did I get famous after Truby? I can't even remember now. But added Truby to the family because Tucker loved him so much and I I liked him. I didn't know that he was uh, going to be part of my family, but I took care of him for a couple of years before he actually officially joined us. So I knew him very well and Tucker was just so upset if they were ever separated. So I knew that I wanted them to stay together forever. So I just had to figure it out and that's what I've done. 
Yeah, what's Truby's story? What what is what is his breed and how old is he? Truby is a quarter horse and he was born in two thousand six over in Wyoming. He's my only rescue animal that I actually have official papers on because (laughs) he's actually a registered quarter horse. He was my my free horse that was all fancy on paper, but completely broken when I got him physically, just very lame and couldn't Mm -hmm. even really walk comfortably. But he was rescued by the girl that gave him to me originally, where he had been neglected for a while and he was pretty emaciated not taken care of or kind of beaten also Mm -hmm. like he has scars on him from this and so Mm -hmm. he didn't have a super great time but if you know quarter horses are very forgiving and happy they love people so even though he had a rough time like you wouldn't really know it he's just happy to be around people all the time and grateful for everything but yeah so he's happy happy to be around you (laughs) Happy to be right. Yeah, yeah. So she oh gave you because she knew that, him, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I first met him, he was so depressed with attention that he was just so annoying. Tucker actually hated him at first because he was just like, hi, Tucker. Remember me from school? We're going to be best friends because they had met each other previously at college in a class. And then they were stuck together in a pasture after that. And Tucker was just like, I don't want to be your friend. Like, you're weird. Why are you following me everywhere? But eventually, Truby grew on him. They became best friends. And then it was, you know, never turning back from that moment of friendship. But yeah, so when I met him, he was super deprived of attention. And I just kind of would take him out to get him attention and get him out and doing stuff. And they just got along so well that he stuck around. What's the first thing when you rescue a horse? What's the first thing you do to sort of an, analyze what you have on your hands here? I would always want to look at health first, especially if you don't have like a history of the horse. Even if you do have a history, it might be wrong. That was a big thing with Truby is I had kind of history of his feet problems, but it didn't end up being correct. And I kind of scrapped it all and just started from scratch as if I didn't know anything with natural barefoot trim because his feet were just a mess and I was pretty certain that was where his problem originated. So getting him physically happy was the first and most important thing. And just kind of while you're doing that, you're working on building that relationship with them. And they're going to appreciate you and love you if they are starting to feel better as they're spending time with you. So that was a big thing with him. Like he has such respect for a good barefoot trimmer now because he knows that they're going to, keep him feeling good because he was not feeling good before and didn't particularly like love barriers or anything but you know with time and barefoot trimmers and everyone making him feel better he's you can just tell he has a respect for the process and an understanding of things that make him feel better Mm, smart yeah don't you love that when they uh when the farrier comes and they finally get them all balanced up and they just start licking and chewing and and their head is dragging you can tell they feel feel better (laughs) i love that i love that so but you're you're not some people might be thinking at this point that you're just you know a rescuer and you're going to take everything that comes along you you've also competed in the show ring and you've tried different disciplines and many different disciplines as far as i can tell so i assume that you don't think that just riding and showing is wrong on horses no no not at all I think everything has a bad side and a good side and you know there's going to be extremes in both directions and anything that you try out Tucker and I have done quite a lot we've never competed with like a strong intention to win ribbons or like do anything substantial with it but we've done a lot of different things for fun and mm-hmm. we started with just going to Western rodeo play day type things, not knowing anything about Western riding, but it mm-hmm. was just a way to do something new and have fun. And he found things that he was good at and he enjoyed. And that's what I think I like about competition is that you get to do these challenges, especially if your horse challenges like Tucker does. He loves jumping and we don't really do it anymore, but he loves to challenge himself with jumps and obstacles and all that stuff. So it was more of just a way for him to have fun and challenge himself and challenge me. And I think it's all great as long as you go about it 
the right way and, you know, always have the horse's comfort and happiness first. Perfect. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think a lot of people are are moving that way too. And you ride in one of the most beautiful places. One of my favorite trail rides of all places is Montana del Oro. And I've seen many photos. People will have to go to your Instagram too and check out all the things you're talking about here too. Well, I mean, I love that Montana del Oro area and I love Cal Poly San Luis Obispo area. And you ride in the San Ynez Valley, I assume too, right? That's where the horses are. Yep, that's where they are right now, and we love traveling to new places, and it's been really fun. Last year, we were actually up in the Bay Area for several months, trail riding around Woodside, too, so we got to go oh, and run for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I read somewhere where, is it Tucker that likes the beach and Truby that likes the forest? That's right. Yeah, yeah, Tucker <laughs> Tucker loves everything, but he especially loves the beach because he can gallop to his heart's desire, which is his favorite thing to do. He loves racing when I was younger and he was younger that's pretty much all we did with friends is we'd go down to the Salinas riverbed and mm-hmm. race each other which now I think back and I don't know how we didn't all break legs but mm-hmm. we didn't it was always fine it was always crazy and insane and so much fun and Tucker loved it and he was always the winner that's why he loved it so much because he's so fast but yeah. he also loves climbing sand dunes and he loves splashing in the water of the waves and he loves everything about the beach. And Truby, Truby likes things that are easy. He doesn't like walking through the deep sand to get to the beach. He doesn't like climbing the dunes because it's hard work. And he doesn't like the waves flashing at him. So he'll follow Truby or he'll follow Tucker everywhere, but he doesn't love it. It's pretty cool. It wasn't his choice. Yeah. Well, I, I love that you're like a you're like a public service announcement on your uh, your social medias because you know like a PSA for healthy choices for our horses, because you have little sections in your blog like what's in my grooming tote, and it's going to sound like a commercial, but you've got my title sponsor Omega Fields in there with the horse shine yes. and the nipplers. You've got Cavallo, which is my show sponsor, in there because you like oh, their really? boots. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't and, even know that. Yeah, Cavallo like saved Truby's life in in my opinion. Like he had the barefoot trim, but he was so uncomfortable without those boots on on any kind of hard surface. And where we lived at the time it was all gravel roads. So he would act like his legs were broken unless he was wearing his boots. So I love yeah. Cavallo boots. I do too. Yeah, they're easy to put on. Uh, Yeah, Cavallo, Carol and Greg are just dear friends from way back. And so I was really glad to see that you you got the Trek boot too, which is, it's right up your alley too with the, uh, the, some of the extreme stuff that you go on those rocks and Montana don't grow up in the, the, what is it? Nosebleed trail. uh, Oh, yes. Nosebleed. And then my favorite up there is Oats Peak. Have you done that one? No, really? Is it higher? Yeah. It's, I remember looking this up. I think it's the highest peak in Montana de Oro, but don't hold me to that. <laughs> but it's a great I'll view. look it up. And you can see you can see Moro Rock and then you do this big loop and you go to like all the different terrains of Montana de Oro and you cross a bunch of bridges and it's just super pretty and I love it. It's it's kind of a long loop if you do the full thing, but it's definitely my favorite ride and I've been itching to go do it again. There we go. Yeah. We're going to have to do this, yeah. Rachel. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, let's do it. I know. And I just love that you're doing that on Rescue Horses, too. We we support that here. We we support that, that you're riding both in saddle and at Liberty and that you're having fun with your horses and that you're finding a place in your life for horses and horses are finding you in their life. So I, I wish you'll come back. I hope you can. When you've got some more news for us, we'd love to follow your story. Maybe a, another couple of two bees that you <laughs> that you rescue and uh, <laughs> yeah. you're like a Noah's Ark there and and I'd love to get to know you a little bit better and I hope our listeners will go to your social media sites and see how much fun it can be to rescue animals definitely thanks so much for having me and talking about all of my rescue animals because of course I like talking about them I could talk about them all day <laughs> <laughs> it's fun isn't it <laughs> thanks for being on mm-hmm. horsemanship radio have a great day Whisper the language of the herd. Listen, you don't have to say a word. It's time for Jamie Jennings to fetch an email from Monty Roberts' inbox and share a morsel of Monty's wisdom in a little segment we like to call Ask Monty. Leave this world a better place in the magic in the language of the herd. Dear Monty, 
How can we learn to listen to horses? Can anyone learn the horse's language or does it require a special talent? Monty's answer. For the past 30 years, I have set out to show the world how my concepts have improved the lives of horses. It has not been easy. The books I've written have helped, and my Monty Roberts University Online has exposed my concepts globally. There are massively more ways to learn today than there ever has been in the 6,000 years since we domesticated the first horses. It does not require a special talent, only a desire to learn. An email was delivered to me recently from a woman who had attended one of my demos in the 1990s. She wrote, quote, my mom sent me these scrapbook pages that she did, and I thought Monty might enjoy seeing them. She and I were at the demonstration, and it really changed how we handled horses. I remember it was quite a scandal in the horse community there at the time, like he was a witch doctor or something. I'm really glad those times have changed. I remember I started my first colt shortly after going to that demonstration. I think that was the nicest thing they could say in rural Nevada at that time. Gently breaking. I have another horse that I rescued from a typical cowboy that hobbled and blindfolded him as a three-year-old in a pen full of cattle. It took a lot of join-ups to get his trust back, but he is 25 years old now and has been my best bud and an awesome jumper for all of those years. Thanks for all that you do for the horses and for the veterans. For more of these insights into good horsemanship, go to www.montyroberts.com and click on the orange banner that says, Get Free Horse Tips. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts, and I'm dedicated to training horses without pain. You can learn to do it too on my Equus Online University. Western, English, the beginner, or the advanced rider, it doesn't matter. You can connect with other students online, too, on our forum. And there's a new lesson every week. It's a lifetime of learning for you on my Equus Online University at MontyRoberts.com. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged, coming right up October 18th, 2019, Monty Roberts Tour at Hartbury College in Hartbury. Then the 20th of October, Monty Roberts Tour is at Myers Co. College in Billsboro. Then November 16th and 17th, he will be in Warsaw, Poland on tour. A great crowd there, sold out. Horsens and Healing then wraps up his year in December. That's December 13, 15, and 15, back in California. And if you can get all of that and so much more by going to MontyRoberts.com, that's where the th- all things Monty Roberts are stored right there, MontyRoberts.com. That's kind of the, the main umbrella site. That's where everything good is. Or you can give the folks at Flag is Up Farms a call at 805-688-6288 or... You can go to the website, MontyRoberts.com, where you will find that same phone number because you're doing something else right now. You're driving. You're cleaning a stall. You're changing a baby's diaper. So you're not going to remember that phone number, and it's okay. And for details about today's show, <laughs> but you, you thought you'd never heard hear, hear someone say changing a diaper on your show, did you, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> but it probably happened. I it know. happens. That's right. And for all the information you need about today's episode, number 145, you can go to horsemanshipradio.com. And there's going to be links and pictures and more information about today's guests and topics. And a great place to interact with Monty Roberts and his fans is on Facebook. Just go to Monty Roberts. That's all you have to search for and click on the love, like, follow button. And you can also follow Monty on Twitter, Monty underscore Roberts, and the same on Instagram. Yes. Now, finally, go get the app. Help your friends who are less tech savvy than you get the app as well. Just go to your app store, search Horse Radio Network, download it today. Free and easy to use. And you can get this show as well as lots of others. That's right. Uh, they're all good, too. And I want you to go on that MontyRoberts.com site and sign up for our newsletter, too. I think <gasps> newsletter. that newsletter weekly q and a's free from t gets the latest greatest you know and P- and you can send in your questions too so get get on that list that's a really good one and then many thanks to our sponsors too that's omega fields our title sponsor and Cavallo Horse and Rider, that's our show sponsor, and MontyRobertsUniversity.com. That's our reason for being. Be sure to visit all the other great shows on the Horse Radio Network at www.horseradionetwork.com. 
Until next time, have many happy horse hours.